You doing okay there, little buddy? Watch out for these cactus. Shadow and I have come to the Superstition Mountains outside of Phoenix, Arizona, and they are full of mystery, legends, superstition. We'll talk a little bit about that. But we've come here mainly to see if there's anything worth rock hounding. I haven't read that there is, but we're going to explore. We're going to study the geology a little bit. We're going to see if we can find some petroglyphs. And we're going to talk about some of these legends. I don't know if most of them are true or not, but there's one I know that's true. It happened 28 years ago. And I know it's true because it happened to me. So this whole region was formed by massive volcanic activity some roughly 20 million years ago. And most of that up there is dacite. Volcanic, extrusive rock. There's a lot of rhyolite. And there's a lot of tuff. Tuff is uh, formed from volcanic ash that is compressed and welded together. It's not a particularly hard rock. It's not spelled T-O-U-G-H, it's spelled T-U-F-F. -F. But we see a lot of that here too. And if there had been geothermal activity, I would expect to be finding agates and jaspers, maybe opals, certainly something, quartz crystals, something. But I don't think there was. Lo and behold, a little piece of chalcedony right there. All right, let's not give up then. We're going to keep looking around and we're going to make our way up to the petroglyphs. We'll check those out and then on the way down, We'll talk about the Superstition Mountains, why they're called the Superstition Mountains, and I'll tell you my story. Okay, I picked up a piece of volcanic rock, and you can see the big crystals that are in there. Those look like little quartz crystals to me. So I know there's silica, I know there's silica. What's that right there? Oh, there we go. There's a beautiful piece of chalcedony right there. Okay. Yeah. We found something. So I'm continuing to find these little pieces of chalcedony like that. Sparkling too. There's little crystals in there. So it's kind of a combination of micro crystalline and little crystals If I could find some bigger ones, I think that'd be pretty cool. I'm gonna keep looking around Okay, again very small oh, about that one. It's a little one too But I was reaching for this one very small Betroidal Glistens I'd like to really figure out how it's formed. I'm going with the, it's formed in tough theory for the moment. All right. Here's a piece. You can see the microcrystalline, the troidal, and that looks more like a piece of rhyolite. <laughs> so, out with the tough. If I'm right, in with the rhyolite. In any event, it is formed in the cracks of volcanic rock. You can also see crystals in that piece of volcanic rock. All right, well, we're making progress. It's not a lot. You know, there's not a lot of stuff here. I wouldn't write a book and recommend so far, you know, this area for rock hounding, but you know, rock hounding is also about learning, exploring, 
figuring things out. And we still got to go see some petroglyphs. Blackish, reddish, greenish. These cactus are absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. Beautiful, they're so big up here. We're here, petroglyphs, straight ahead. Let's go check them out. This is all volcanic rock and basalt. And then it's been weathered with water. It has run down, it's really cool. There's some water down there. <laughs> Uh, we're on our way back. Seems like maybe now's a good time to talk a little bit about the Superstition Mountains. They're called the Superstition Mountains for so many reasons. One of them is that at times people have heard a rumbling coming from the mountains and they're actually real. And seismologists have figured out that when there's a very small tremor, it shakes this rock and it causes a, a low frequency vibration to kind of rumble down the canyon. And thus it really does rumble. So that's one reason. Then lots of stories, the, the Dutchman's mine, the lost mine, 
um, Spaniards to have apparently hidden gold up here. They pulled a lot of gold and silver out of it. Um, people have mysteriously disappeared. So I don't know if those stories are all true or not. So the one story I do know that's true is my story. Because it happened to me. So I'll tell it to you. 28 years ago, my first job out of college, Phoenix, Arizona. I moved to Phoenix, Arizona. I had a horse. I brought her with me. I'd raised this horse from a foal. And I broke her, the Monty Foreman method, very gentle. And we, we were really good together. We competed in a Western saddle. She also could cut. She was a great horse. I brought her up here to the Superstition Mountains. You know I'm 28. 28 year olds do dumb things. Of course I do them still. I came alone, just me and my horse. Trailered her up and we went up. You know, I'm not exactly sure even now. It's been so long ago what trail it might have been or where we were. It was not this part of the Superstition Mountains, but up we went, up a trail, clear up to the top. It was kind of switchbacks getting to the top. And at the top, there was one lone tree with some shade. I took her reins, tied it to the tree. I unpacked my saddlebag with the lunch I had, sat down under the shade, ate my lunch. It was a nice cool breeze. I really didn't mean to, but I fell asleep. I woke up startled because I was instantly concerned about my horse. And sure enough, she was gone. Losing a horse in mountains like these, that is not good. And I'm not as concerned about me, I can hoof it out. But it, how do you get the horse out of here? Can you ever find it again? I panic. I started to run back along the same trail that we came. And you know, if it was close to home, horses always go home. But we weren't, we were many miles away. And so I didn't know if she would go back to where the trailer was or just wander anywhere, who knows? But as I ran, panicked, I saw her clear down, clear way down at the bottom of the mountain we'd come up. No way she could hear me. And there was a zigzag trail to get up. And I was just, I mean, I was panicked. All kinds of thoughts were racing through my mind. So I stopped, I put my hand, reached my hand out and I prayed and asked God to stop that horse. And that horse stopped, dead in her tracks. I am not making this up. And then I began to slide down the mountain because I didn't even dare go along the, the switchbacks. It would take too long to catch up to her. I was afraid she'd start trotting again. I slid down that mountain. Like I said, I was 28. I was younger, but I mean, I slid down that mountain and eventually made it to her. I was worried as I approached her, she might start trotting off again, but she didn't. She stood perfectly still. I reached for the reins, held them, composed myself, put my foot in the saddle, mounted her, and off we went. Now you can make of this what you want, but those are the facts, and I'm sticking to it.